Hi, my name is Oliver and welcome to this tutorial on how to move shapes in After Effects. Now this is a bit of an alternative method as you usually move the shapes by animating the path, but this often doesn't look that good and therefore I wanted to show you a fun and quirky method to actually trick the eye and use speed to morph the shapes. So let's get right into it. I'll create a new composition and call this main. Now we need two different shapes to morph into each other. So first of all, I'll select the polygon tool. And if you don't have the polygon, you can just hold down and select it. Then I'll hold down shift while dragging to get this polygon. And I'll align it both horizontally and vertically. If you don't have the align window, you can go to window and click align. Now, if I deselect this layer, I'll create the rectangle by holding down, selecting the rectangle tool. Then I can hold down shift again to drag and size it accordingly. I can align this as well. And now I can name these layers properly. So this is the rectangle and this is the polygon. Then I want to align the anchor point properly. So I'll select the anchor point tool hold down command while tracking this anchor point and it will snap to the center. So if I select the polygon, hold down command and drag it, you can see it snaps to the center. And you have to remember that this is control on windows. Now I want these animations to be roughly 16 frames each. So if I go 16 frames ahead, I can trim this layer. If I select V, I can get my selection tool again could just trim this layer down to 16 frames and then I can trim the other layer accordingly. Then I want to go 16 frames ahead again. So that's right around here and I can just trim this as well. Then I want to add a bit of rotation. So if I go to the start, select the first layer and press R as in rotation, I can add a rotation keyframe, go to the end and set the rotation to 90. Now I can just copy these keyframes and paste them on the other layer. So if I press R, I can see it's the exact same keyframes. If I play this, we just see a bit of rotation as it morphs into the other shape. But this is really rough. So we want to make it a lot more smooth. But first of all, we want to add a still keyframe here in the middle and at the end as the shape will be bouncing up and down. And as it touches the ground, we want it to stand still for one frame. So we can actually just drag these keyframes one frame ahead. Then we can trim the layer accordingly. So we have one frame here where it stands still and we have one frame here where it stands still as well. So to trim the work area of the composition, just go to the last keyframe and press N. And if you play it, you can see that it just stands still for a bit. But other than that, it loops perfectly. Now we want to pre-compose these two layers. So we'll select both of them, right click and select pre-compose. Now we can just call this animation, press OK. And now we actually want to add the bouncing up and down animation. So we'll go to the very start, select the animation. And first of all, we actually have to adjust the anchor point as we want to add some squash and stretch later. So we want the anchor point to be at the bottom. So if we select the anchor point tool again, select the anchor point while holding down shift and then drag it to the bottom. Now we want to go to our layer, press V to get our selection tool again. Just press P as in position. Now if we right click the position, we can separate the dimensions as we only want to work with the Y dimension, which is the vertical. So we'll add a keyframe to the Y position and first of all, we want our shape to be at the bottom. So as it hits the ground, so we'll just drag it down. Then we'll go eight keyframes ahead. And then we'll drag it up in the air. Go eight keyframes ahead again. So that's 16 keyframes. And we want it to be at the bottom again. But this time we can just copy the first keyframe and paste it. So as you see, goes from the ground up to the sky and down again. Now, because we have this still keyframe where it doesn't rotate, we just want it to be on the ground for one frame. So we'll add another keyframe. So as you can see, it stays in that position for two frames. 
then we'll have to go eight keyframes ahead again. So like this, and we want it to be up in the air again. So we can just copy the keyframe where it's in the air and paste it. And then we want to go eight keyframes ahead and then copy and paste the keyframe where it's at the ground. Now we want to ease these keyframes. So we'll just select all of them and press F9. Then we'll go to the graph editor. And if you don't have this view, you're not viewing the value graph. You could just go down here, click and select the value graph view. Now we can deselect the X position as we don't want to work with that. So hold down command or control, click it. And now we want to ease the keyframes. So as it goes up, it deaccelerates, and as it goes down, it accelerates. So it has to have the highest speed or the highest change in value at the start. So we just drag this handle up like this. Then as it goes to the top, it will deaccelerate. So we have to drag the handles out to exaggerate it a bit. And then it will have to accelerate as it goes down again. So drag the handle up, and as you can see, here it deaccelerates and then it accelerates as it goes down. And we just have to replicate this curve for the other one. So we'll just drag the handles. So it's approximately the same. It's roughly like this. And now if we play the animation back, you can see that it jumps like this. Now this is still a bit rough, so we want to add a bit of squash and stretch to really sell this animation. So if we go out of the graph editor, hold down shift and press the S key, we'll get our scale property and we'll unlock the constraint proportions. Then at first we want this to be squashed down as it has just hit the ground. So we can go for a width of something like 150% and as it has to retain its volume while being squashed, we also have to lower the Y scale to 50%. Then we'll add a keyframe. And just as it then starts to move up again, we want it to be stretched out. So this will actually just be the reverse. So we'll go for 50 and 150. Then as it goes back to the top, it will have to reset. So we'll go back to 100 by 100. And as it falls down again, We'll go to the frame just before it hits the ground and we can actually just copy this keyframe where it's stretched out. So like this, then as it has stayed on the ground for two frames, we want it to be squashed again. So again, we can copy the squashed keyframe, paste it. And just the frame after we want it to be stretched, copy and paste that keyframe. And then again, as it moves up, we want it to be the normal size, so 100 by 100. And then just the frame before it hits the ground, we want it to be stretched again. So you can actually just do this really easily by just copying and pasting the keyframes that has the desired scale properties. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then as in the middle right here, after two frames, we want it to be squashed down. So we just go two keyframes ahead copy that squash keyframe. You won't really be able to see it here, but it works when it's looped at the end. Now to ease these keyframes, we'll just select all of them, press F9. And actually the only thing we have to do is add a bit of value change here as it moves up, because right now it takes way too long for it to get back to the normal scale. So if we just select this in the middle, drag out the handles like this. You can see that it's a lot quicker for it to get to the normal scale. So we want to do this for all of these. So if we just drag it out like this, you can see it takes a bit longer for it to get to that stretch position, which is what we want, because at the top, we want it to retain its normal size. So we can just repeat for the other side, just like this. And if we play this back, you can see that it morphs between the two shapes. And now we can make it a bit more fun by changing the colors as it morphs. So if we go into our animation composition by double clicking it, we can just import a color scheme if you have one, and open it up. 
drag it into the composition. And now I want it to start maybe at this blue color. So I'll select my rectangle at first, click the fill property, choose my eyedropper tool and just select the blue color. Now you can select whatever color you'd like. So you can actually just pick here from the color selector, just click OK. And then I want my polygon to maybe have this sort of orange color. So I'll select my fill again and pick that with the eyedropper tool, click OK. Then I can actually just delete the color palette. So when I go to the main composition, go out of the graph view and play it back, just has to load. And then you can see that it changes colors. Now to make this a bit more interesting, we can just add some strokes or accents just as it hits the ground. So if we go to a point where it's at the ground, so right around here, we can then select our pen tool and click and then hold shift and click again to draw this path. Now we want it to be centered roughly around this shape. So we can just adjust it accordingly. So this looks fine. Then we can add a bit of a stroke by pulling out the stroke like this. And now right here, when it changes to this orange color, we want it to be orange. So if we select this again, click on the stroke and select the eyedropper tool, just select the orange color. Now, as you can see, it's not aligned properly. We can just select the layer and click the arrow down key a few times. Now it looks properly aligned. So if we go to the start just before it hits the ground, we can then trim the layer. We can just press enter to rename this to stroke accent. Now, if we open up the layer, we can add a trim path, which will animate the stroke. So add, and then we'll select trim paths. If we open this up, we actually want it to be animated from the center, and then animate out in both directions. So if we set the start and end to 50% each, it will start from the center. We can add a keyframe to both of them, then go maybe six keyframes ahead by holding down command or control and pressing the right arrow key six times. Now we can change the start to zero and the end to 100%. And as you can see, the stroke animates outwards. Now we want this to happen a bit faster as it's way too slow right now. So we'll just select the keyframes and press F9 to ease them. Go to the graph editor. Then we can select the two last keyframes here. Just drag them back like this. So as you can see, there's a bigger value change at the start and then it eases out. So if we play it, something like this, but we want the stroke to disappear right after it appears. And to do this, we'll actually just select the layer, press Command or Control D to duplicate it. And then we'll go to the track mat. And if you don't have this visible, you can just click this toggle switches slash modes. Then we can select the alpha inverted mat. Now we can drag this just one keyframe to the right. And as you can see, it disappears just after it has appeared. And what this essentially does is that it mats out the first layer. So just as this animation starts to play, you can see that where this stroke would have been, it has just removed it from the other layer. So just like that, we have that animation ready. And we can trim this. So if we select both of the layers and then press U, we can just go to the last keyframe. Then we can press Command, Shift and D to split it and delete. And we can also do this with the other layer just so it looks a bit better in the composition. Now we maybe want to add some accents that fly up into the air. So we can just go to the start of this last one choose the pen tool and then click in the middle bottom of this shape and maybe click up here, hold down shift while dragging so we can drag it out. Now we don't want there to be any fill, so we can just click on this fill and then select no fill, press okay. Then we can trim this layer accordingly. And we also want to add some trim paths animation to this. So if we open it up, go to add, 
and then select the trim paths, can open it up. And for this one, we want it to start at zero because we want it to start at the bottom and then animate outwards. So if we drag this down to zero, add a keyframe to the start and the end, we can then go six keyframes ahead by pressing command or control, right arrow key. And then we want both of them to be at 100. So right now you can't see anything, but that's because the animation is happening at the same time. So if we select the two start keyframes and just drag them one frame to the right, you can see that this stroke will actually be visible. So we want to add the same easing as the other accent. So if we select the keyframes, press F9, go into the graph editor, we can then select the two last keyframes. If we click V to get our selection tool, select them and drag them back like this. Now, if we play this back, you can see that there's this little accent popping up. So maybe we want to duplicate this stroke accent so it will happen in both directions. So if we go out of the graph editor, we could just rename this layer to stroke accent right, then press command D to duplicate it. And if we press S for scale, we can unlock the constraint proportions and we can just set the X scale to minus 100 and it will be reversed. So we can rename this to left. Now, maybe we want to adjust this a bit so it's not the exact same. So if we open up the layer, go to contents, shape, and then select the path. We can drag this path handle. So maybe make it a bit different like this. Drag the handle out while holding shift. Now we can close down the layer and the other layer and we want to trim these layers. So if we select both of them and press U to see the keyframes, we can go to the last keyframe, press command shift D to split them, press delete. Now we also want to offset this animation so we can just select the top one and drag it over by one frame. So you can see that it's offset like this. Now we want to add this bit of accent animation to every time it hits the ground. So if we close down the layers, select all of them and press Command D or Control D to duplicate them. We can just drag them up like this. And then we want to add them at the end of the animation. So we'll go to the point where it's just about to hit the ground, so the frame before, and drag the layers over. Then we want to change the color, so it's actually this blue color, or whatever color you have picked. So if we go up to stroke, select the eyedropper tool, and then select that color and click OK. You can see that it's this other color, but actually you won't be able to see much right here, because most of it will have to happen at the start of the animation. So if we select all of these last layers, press command D to duplicate again and drag them up. Then you can see that one frame is happening right here. And then we want the rest to happen at the start. So we can actually just drag these frames over to the start and then drag them one frame out of the composition. And now if we play this back, you can see that it loops perfectly. So, thank you so much for watching, I really hope that you learned something new today. If you want to see more of this content, you can press the like button and subscribe to the channel. Remember to turn on the notifications. Also, if you want to dive a bit deeper into the shape animation, I have a course on Skillshare. It's called Text Animation Using Shapes in After Effects. And you can actually get two months of free premium membership if you sign up using the link below. That's all for now. Till next time.